The National STEM Video Game Challenge was started in 2011, launched by President Barack Obama as part of the Educate to Innovate campaign. The interest in creating the challenge was motivated by the fact that video games are instruments of technology that children love. And we had to make it relate to deceiving. It starts out with the king who's trying to take over another town or country and he deceives them saying they're safe. Video games are ubiquitous in our culture and also a way in which children can begin to learn vital systems thinking skills, collaboration and cooperation skills. So we developed a range of partnerships with funders and with community outreach members and this past year added the Hive here in New York City. It's a boy nurtured by his parents, also a scientist, and he has to save the world from an evil scientist who's making mutants. The leaders of the Hive were very interested in the National STEM Video Game Challenge because this challenge permits kids to become creators, makers of their own digital media, and uh, involved in a community that is supporting one another. I learned that games could be educational, which I hadn't realized. There can be a value in playing a game instead of just like winning. It can teach you lessons. So many young people do enjoy playing video games. And for a lot of them, the concept of taking something you enjoy that much and actually getting to create a game of your own can be a really powerful entry point into all sorts of different fields, creative fields, digital design, uh, creative problem solving, the technical side, uh, programming. And so we think that by tapping into things that kids are passionate about and connecting that with meaningful learning opportunities, you create a really powerful combination. There's either good things or bad things here. Good things that you either have to admit and then make the tree grow or bad things. It's kind of important to consider every Hard about making the game because you need to think about is this game going to be fun? Is it going to be too hard? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most interesting things about the workshops we did this year was that we had young people from Global Kids Online Leadership Program leading the workshops and, and working with young people from all around the, the city. Uh, we facilitate workshops and we teach um, the kids how to use different game design engines and how to be creative in themselves and to, to create the best games they can make. My favorite experience has to be our first workshop at the Book and Public Library. We were doing great because the response we got from the kids and all the adults in the room, it just kept pumping me up and I felt on top of the world. There was something really magical about getting the kids from uh, one organization mentoring kids from all over the city and the different organizations that we hadn't really tried before. Uh, oh, there's no gravity in the top-down game. Like, you want a platformer? Well, some of the issues that we've talked about in the past are how media affects, how media affects our personalities and society, how you can stop war and what are the consequences of war, how you can address energy issues that are currently being worked on today, like renewable energy and things like that, and how global warming affects the planet and how you can address that. It's called Polar Bear Freedom, and the polar bear is being led by the player to escape the melting ice cap of the Arctic. One of the things that's most exciting about the Hive is the diversity of the museums and libraries and youth organizations that are involved. And I think that the National STEM Video Game Challenge this year was able to go around the city from libraries to museums to after school spaces uh, to capture that rich diversity of the Hive. And you know, moving forward, we hope that the National STEM Video Game Challenge will have a permanent place in the Hive because the assets that are represented by this collaborative are so exciting.